So my name's James Routledge. I'm the founder of Sanctus and tonight I'm going to be talking about mental health basically. So mainly kind of sharing my story of mental health, hopefully in a way that people can, that everyone can relate to and kind of hopefully want to give people a different perspective on mental health and kind of a fresh outlook on something that is uh, really needed uh, to be talked about more. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what Sanctus does and how we approach mental health and our vision to put the world's first mental health gym on the high street. Hello everyone, uh, thanks for having me tonight. My name's James, founder of Sanctus. Sitting in the audience, I kind of nearly scrapped my talk and thought, shall I do another one on how speaking at a 250 person event in front of the creative industry um, alongside a load of speakers that you admire impacts your mental health. Um, but I thought, no, I'll stick to my normal talk. Um, and as the, the one slide quite clearly says, I want to talk about mental health tonight. Um, and specifically, I suppose, I want to talk about my mental health um, and the journey I've kind of been on with my own mental health in the last two years. I'm not a scientist, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a therapist, I'm not um, a life coach, I'm not some sort of like guru. Um, I'm just a guy, really, uh, a guy who doesn't wear socks and wears Nike trainers, sometimes wear caps backwards, um, so you might call me a millennial. Um, and I just want to talk about mental health and how it's been for me for the last few years and hopefully kind of if I could leave hopefully leave you with something it will be to think about mental health slightly differently than maybe you did when you turned up tonight or maybe reaffirm what actually you kind of already know about mental health um, if I'm honest you know wind back the clock kind of three years ago and you said the phrase mental health to me I probably would have grunted and been like oh like what's that um you know, growing up, mental health was kind of something in my family that was kind of swept under the rug and not really talked about, um, even if there was kind of packs of antidepressants in the cupboard at, uh, cupboard at home, it was kind of like taboo to kind of talk about that. Uh, at school, you know, mental health, not exactly on the curriculum, is it? Um, alongside PE, maybe it should be, but again, not really talked about at school. When I went to university, uh, that was more about just going out and getting pissed than about mental health. And it was only really until I actually started working and I suppose had some semblance of pressure in my life that mental health became a thing to me. And actually at university I was extremely bored and um, met my best mate there and we kind of watched the social network and read TechCrunch and thought, you know what, let's be startup founders. So we, um, we actually dropped out of university to start a business kind of went down the whole raising money thing and, and did all that. And it was only when I was suddenly found myself in, um, in the real world, essentially, where maybe wasn't aware of my mental health, but I definitely became aware of feelings kind of, for kind of the first time in my life. And especially being a kind of uh, a young guy thrust into an early leadership uh, position, leadership with quotation marks, I started to feel things like essentially insecurity, like, fucking hell, I don't know what I'm doing here. Um, how on earth did I get here? Um, I'm not good enough. I would look at the people around me and compare myself to them and think, my God, they are so much more qualified and experienced and better than me. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Uh, I'd also left university early to, to move to another city, so I, I wasn't around my friends and my family. I started to feel quite isolated. So I started to feel things, yet... Everyone around me seemingly was, was doing really, really great. Uh, and especially in the world, the tech world that I was in, uh, I'm, I'm sure it's the same in, in every other industry, everyone seemed to be smashing it. Um, and they definitely said they were. Everyone was doing great. Everyone's business was doing really well. Everyone was just smashing it and killing it and crushing it. I was like, fucking hell, I'm doing awful over here. Um, but obviously I, I didn't say that because I was like, well, I can't actually say that. So really all of those feelings, they just kind of got just compressed and went down and down and down. And, and I, de I just closed up. I didn't, didn't talk about them at all. And I would look at other people really and kind of judge and base my life on, on how other people were leading their life. Um, especially, um, you know, people uh, with more success than me. I would kind of follow them on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook and I would, I would look at the way they were living their life and compare where I was at to them and, and actually try and be like them. And 
I kind of really tried to build myself from like the outside in. So I, I tried to think, who should I be? And I tried to be that person as opposed to thinking, who am I? And, and trying to really live that person. I would, I would think how I should be in front of a, a colleague or how I should be in front of a, you know, an advisor or a mentor. Who, who should I be rather than who, who actually am I? Um, and I kind of got away with living my life like that actually for a long time. And I, instead of, of ever, ever going there and ever opening up, I just filled my life with work and worked 14 hours a day, you know, went out at the weekends and, and filled my weekends with, with all sorts to ever avoid feeling any of those things, essentially. And for me, it wasn't actually until I shut that business down that I really started to feel what, what was mental health. I was... Uh, I, remember, I can remember one day I just was sitting at home on my, uh, on my lounge, my parents' hell, house, and my heart just started like beating really, really fast. Or it felt like it was beating really, really fast. Um, I was like, this feels a bit weird. I've never actually felt my heart beating before. I've just kind of just, I thought your heart just beats all the time, but I could really, really feel it. And over the course of really about the next 12 months, these little signs and symptoms and things kept happening in my body that I'd, I'd never really been aware of. So it started with what felt like an awkward heartbeat. It became kind of sweaty palms. It became a dry mouth. It became feeling kind of out of breath. All the feelings I'm kind of feeling now. Um, and I would, I would constantly have these feelings most days. And it started off quite small. And the best way I could describe it when I, when I think back was I just felt weird. Just felt a little bit uneasy, not not quite myself. But then I just I told no one because even though I'd maybe left this world of of sales and presentation and pitching, I was still selling. I was still selling to my mates that things were going well. I was still selling to my friends and my family that you know life was good. I was still I was still putting on this front to the outside world that everything was good uh, and I was fine. And really, on the inside, I wasn't. I was. I was deeply hurt by what happened in, in my last business. Um, I was lost. I was scared. I was having these existential thoughts of, God, who am I? What do I do with my life? What do I do next? Even though I was 24. Um, but on the outside, it was, you know, it was, it was well-filtered Instagram photos of, of nights out and, and traveling. And it was the complete opposite, really, of, of how I was feeling. And I just, I just kind of covered it up. And those feelings compounded. The less I opened up about them or the, the more I closed them away, uh, they kind of started to feel a little bit more severe, essentially. You know, they, they would become a little bit more... The, the volume would almost be turned up on them a little bit more. So um, it would be a constant daily thing that I would just, just feel anxious. That was kind of like a normal a normal day. I would, uh, I'd be in a meeting, I, I'd feel this, this rush of anxiety in my chest. I would go into the bathroom and, and stand there in silence, um, just trying to breathe and, and feel my foot on the feet on the floor. And that, that became normal to me. Um, whilst again, on the outside, it's all good. I'm fine. Things are great. And it got to a point where even someone maybe as British and as stubborn as I, as I was, I, um, I turned to the only place that I know well, a good friend of mine, Google, um, incognito, and uh, you know, typed in how I was feeling. I uh, typed in these symptoms, so I typed in all these things, and, and enter the world of, of mental health. And I kind of knew in the back of my mind that what I was feeling was, was mental health related. And, and that kind of Google search only kind of confirmed it for me. It was, it was mental illness, it was generalized anxiety disorder, suicide, depression. Uh, I was on these NHS websites. I even found myself on some sort of Reddit forum um, at one point, which, which really wasn't a good place to be in. Um, and I felt, if I'm honest, extremely scared um, when I entered this kind of world of mental health online. Um, I kind of felt wrong, weird, broken, like I needed fixing. Um, and it made me less likely, actually, to, to want to talk to anyone about my mental health because I thought, fucking hell, like, I do not want to go there. Um, so I just kind of ran away fr from the whole thing for, for even longer. 
until it got to the point where I started to have panic attacks. So panic attacks were kind of this real physical manifestation of anxiety, and it really felt like I was basically having a stroke, um, and that, that really, really scared me. And after that happened, I, I only actually had one conversation um, with anyone about my mental health uh, before I started talking to a room for 250 people about it. Um, and that was with my housemate, who was uh, a bit older than me, actually a doctor or a former doctor. I got home one night, we had a brew, obviously. And I was like, mate, oh, I had this like, panic attack today. And his, his, surpri- his, his uh, response really shocked me. He just said, mate, you sound really stressed. That simple. And somehow that, that conversation, the, there was no judgment from him. He didn't think I was weird. He didn't look at me funny. In, in a weird way, bless him, he almost didn't care. Uh, and he's a great friend, but he almost wasn't that bothered. He was like, well, yeah, you sound really stressed, mate. You've got a lot on. And, um, and it, sounds, it sounds really silly, but that one conversation really kind of gave me permission to, to feel that way. It made, it made it feel okay for me to, to feel like that. And um, before I knew it, I was, uh, I was hammering out a blog post called Mental Health in Startups, given the world that I was from. And I just wrote all of this down. I just hammered it out. I was just in this blaze of, of typing furiously. I was just writing about my, my anxiety and how I'd felt over the last few years and how I'd not talked to anyone about it and how I just knew that other people must feel the same. And uh, with sweaty palms and a, and, a, and a beating heart and a dry mouth, I hit publish and I decided to just plaster it all over my social media as a, as a kind of, of, of I'm coming out. I almost, it was almost like a coming out. I, I couldn't, it's like I couldn't live much longer this lie that I'd kind of felt like I'd been selling myself and others. And I had to come clean of, of how I'd been feeling. And I did that and I got this incredible response. You know, 15,000 people read the post in a few days and trust me, no one was reading my blog before that. Um, and thousands and thousands of people, uh, hundreds, not thousands, that's a lie, hundreds of people um, got, got in touch with me and, and messaged me and said, wow, like, thank you so much for writing this. I would never have thought it. Um, me too. And over the course of the next few months, I had hundreds of conversations which, which went in the same way. It was thank you for writing, and me too. And it was through that connection with other people that I felt something I'd just never, ever felt before, which was was connection. That is the word for it. It was like this real, honest, open conversation with another human. Like, I'd, I'd never really felt that other than, you know, those times when you were younger and you had a sleepover and you turn the lights off and you, you ask your mate who he fancies at school or something. Uh, I'd never really had that those conversations before. Um, and I found myself having them almost on a daily basis where I could be really open. I, I could be me. I could be myself, like my full self. I, could just, I, was, I was being completely honest with people. Um, and, that, and things moved quite quickly. I, you know, I ended up writing and, and talking about mental health quite publicly. Um, but really what I noticed was that through this process of, of connecting with others and, and really being open and honest and vulnerable and, and kind of authentic, um, I found myself kind of, kind of getting back to, to old James, like kind of getting back to, to center, to, to what I felt was, was me. And at this point, I started... Um, doing maybe what you would class as more like professional connection. So I started uh, toying around with, with coaching and therapy and groups and, and cre- going into these spaces where I was, I was really pushing myself to, to, to learn more about myself and to be open and to be honest um, in, in front of, of others. And then I kind of felt myself go beyond centre and I started to learn things about myself that I never knew. I started to learn more about my identity and who I am than I'd ever, ever learned before. I became, felt like I'd become more self-aware, more knowledgeable, more empathetic. Um, felt like I just became a bit of a better person, to be honest. And this was a side to mental health that I didn't even know existed because when I'd gone to Google mental health or what was going on for me, everything I saw was, was, was negative. It was, it was depression, it was anxiety, it was, it was the one in four. It was what happens when, when you're ill or when you're in a bad place or when you've got a challenge or an issue. And what I was feeling was this real uplift. It was like, wow, this, is, this feels like I'm getting fitter or stronger. And really that, that completely changed my whole perception of mental health. And, and since then, uh, through Sanctus, 
I've kind of been on this almost this mission and with the rest of the team at Sanctus and what we do now to to kind of hit home what feels like a very simple message now. Uh, but obviously I've been sharing it for two years, which is so that we all have mental health, right? And I think when I was I was kind of struggling, I thought that mental health was something that just I had and no one else in the world knew how I felt. And before that, when I had no idea of what mental health was, I thought that it was something that other people uh, suffered with. And and really what I now know to be to be so true is that we all have mental health and, and we're all just on on its spectrum from one end to the other at any one given time, just like we are with physical health. And the big difference um, in physical health, in the, word of, in the world of physical health, is that we train and we strengthen and we try and get fitter to, to prevent ourselves from, from getting ill or from, um, yeah, from, from growing old and, and dying early or whatever. We, we invest in our physical health so much more. Yet in mental health, we, we just don't do that. We wait until we're at a challenge in our life and we burn out and we get signed off work and, and we go through this immense pain before we actually do anything about it. That, that is pretty much how our entire society reacts to mental health. It is a reaction. Um, so our entire mission really through Sanctus is to, to change that perception, to show that actually mental health is something that we can all be a part of. We, we can all um, inclusively be involved in mental health and, and invest proactively in our own mental health to actually become more ourselves, essentially, be to become a better version of ourselves. We don't have to wait until we're struggling. And there's no shame in um, talking openly about your mental health because it's something that actually connects connects us all in some way. Um, and that process for me, doing that um, in the last couple of years under Sanctus is, has, has been thoroughly enjoyable, if not difficult at times, and, and connecting with others through coaching or through therapy or just by taking space for myself to say those weird little things in my head that I would never say have, have led me to grow in ways that I would, would never, ever have expected. Um, and that really ties into, I suppose, just this overarching Sanctus mission of ours to, uh, which is actually to kind of put the world's first mental health gym on the high street. So that'll be the day where the stigma is kind of banished and people actually treat mental health just in the same way um, that they do their, uh, their physical health. I don't want to talk too much uh, about Sanctus really. I just kind of want to, I suppose, just hopefully implore if that's the right word, or inspire people to think about their mental health in that way, in a way that, you know, you do have mental health, you can get involved with it, uh, even if your challenges feel small and insignificant to you and you think, oh, I'm not, you know, my problems aren't bad enough to talk. Uh, it's all relative. And as humans, uh, just the human condition is, is pretty hard work, especially living in London. Uh, the tube requires... Uh, itself requires uh, enough for us to talk in, to a therapist or a coach about, I think. Um, and I don't know how long I've rambled on for. Um, and that's how I kind of want to end, just by saying, look, mental health is, is a great, great problem which needs to be, to be solved in many ways in our society and a lot needs to be done to care for people who are suffering in silence, which is definitely the current case. But also mental health is a great opportunity for all of us to become uh, more ourselves. So thank you for listening.